The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians. Hour. my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, market days, 11 o'clock till noon, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. Perfect day for it. Let's just say you're a little nervous about this market. You've got a portfolio. You've been trying to protect it. You don't really know what to do. This is the time to call. In fact, what I've been telling my subscribers for a while, we started this. I had a webinar that I call the parallels between now, the socioeconomic, political, and there were some other aspects to it, uh, parallels between this period right now and the 19, late 1920s. Did it mean that, yep, 1929, we're going to have a crash like 1929, we're going to a depression? No, it was nothing to do with that. It said, yeah, you've got to be aware that there's a possibility, but it was more an identification of where we are and how um, you can ameliorate some of those problems. And what I had suggested very soon after that to subscribers who had never gone short ever before was that this was a perfect time to start learning the process. And especially now, it's not like it was back in 1987 when the market crashed. You had to go short because there was no other way to do it. Um, you couldn't go long because the makeup of the um, the the, the actual formation of the now they're called ETFs or ETNs or the makeup of the trust or the makeup of the uh, specific instrument that you were using was to actually go short. In other words, today they have like the DOG, which is 100 percent short the Dow. That means you can buy it in your portfolio. You can buy it in your IRA. You can buy it anywhere. No one's going to stop you because you are not going short. You are going along that instrument. The instrument itself is actually the short instrument. Why? Because the DOG, look, let me show you something. This is the DOG is now in leg C, but that wasn't the issue that I wanted to go to. I wanted to show you something. Do I have it here? Where did I put it? Oh, I shouldn't have even said it. Yeah, no, I've got it right here. This is exactly what you're looking at. You see that beautiful design? You see that mirror image? You see that right there? You see the way you could have, um, instead of trading the, the short side of the diamonds, the DIA, which is the trade spider industrial, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, you could have traded the DOG, the um, trust, uh, spider tr uh, trust short Dow 30. They do the work for you. They, they short every one of the Dow stocks, and you can buy the actual instrument because you want to buy it so that your instrument goes up when the market goes down. You're buying this, but you're experiencing that in real time. So your profit increases as this goes down. So in other words, it's the mirror image. So I had said to subscribers, we had two Two whole series over months where we bought a tiny, I said, just to learn to be able to trade the downside of the market as well as the upside. You don't want to be um, sitting there and saying to yourself, oh, man, I wanted to get out, but I didn't want to sell my good stocks because the markets could still later on go higher. I, and I don't really like to short. Uh, I, I've never shorted. What can I do? You could have gone along the DOG. So uh, subscribers took a tiny little position to get used to it. Um, they lost a tiny little amount, one and a half percent, I can't remember, of a very small position. But the last time I said we're going to buy half of this position, sorry, one third position. That's the statement of, 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 of confidence. That we're going to buy a, half, um, a third of this position of the DOG because we're anticipating that the Dow is going to go even lower. So um, at this particular point, it's working really well. And for the first time, these people, these subscribers who had never 
before being able to protect their portfolio have got some protection because they are experienced the benefits of being on the right side of the market on the way down. At least for now, we'll see what happens, but the Dow is testing that 17,500 level. I've made it a big deal. A close below 17,500 is going to be one of the first times, it will be the first time, in fact, since the market broke out in February, February, so that's whole of February, March, April, May, June. So it's five months that the market has been above that level. So a breakdown is going to be, and there's that, there's that wedge formation I'm talking about. I can get rid of this because I don't think that's valid at this particular point. So I get rid of this little cup formation. Just for now, I can always put it back. Just want to make it clear. Let me, let me open this up and you can see exactly what we're talking about right there. And there's the target. Target is right there at the 17,421 level by Monday. We'll see. You might get this sooner, might not. Who knows? If it has a big bounce because all of a sudden uh, there's a statement made that looks positive, this market will try to bounce. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's move on. So um, we'll run the numbers. The Dow is down 154, was down 180 just a moment ago. It's at 17,528. The S&P is at uh, 2,051, down 17. The E-minis are down 20. What well, down 22 just a moment ago? Let's go on, and I'll show you something very interesting. The VIX index right here. The VIX index is pulling back at 1843. Remember, we spoke about the potential for a little double top in the 120-minute chart with a little hiatus, a little period of rest. It's going on to gray leg B. It needs to go above um, 19 point, was that 65? Let me just, I don't, I don't want to guess. It has to go above 19. 80 to start another leg to the upside. And at this particular point, you've got to watch this real closely because the, the MACD turning down is a failure. And the stochastic way under 80% says, wow, you need a lot of price movement and a lot of time to the upside to start getting the stochastic back above 80%, which is the place that I like it. Um, okay. So, and as I say, we, we are along the VIX index, but uh, via a different instrument altogether. Now, let's go on. So the QQQ series... Um, uh, pulling back very sharply. It's testing this weekly up-channel support. Look at that up-channel support, long-term up-channel that's being tested right now. Look at that. Is that a magnificent up-channel? And this is called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Support Level. And we'll see. If, it, if there's a close below 105.70 on Friday at 4 o'clock, that's going to be very negative because the MACD and stochastic are very negative. I would have to put a down arrow in the Q weekly chart and on the S&P and Dow, uh, there's a real good chance that we're going to get a sell signal upgraded to a sell mode in, in, in good time. But we'll deal with that. You can't talk about the, for the, the weekly candle as if the week is closed. We have to wait until Friday at 4 o'clock. All right, let's go on. We've got the IWM failing <clears throat> badly. And the IWM is suggesting strongly that the monthly could give a hat trick top. We're going to watch this really closely because if the IWM at 122.17 down $1.58 actually closes the month of July under 120, 121 to 120 key support. Now I'm going to say under 120, which is the 200 period daily support level. If it closes under that, that's a very big negative. And that's going to suggest we've got time and price to the downside in this move. At this, mo at this particular point, we've used up a chunk of time because we used up seven or more months just going sideways a distribution, a big time distribution. All right, let's go on. The, the, the IWC, which I spoke about when I did Tom show just uh, in the last show, um, making a peak F in the, in the weekly chart. And this is the iShares microcap ETF, which was the leader of all the indexes to the upside, it was fantastic. Now it's acting very poorly. So talking about that, let's go to the IBB, which has been the leader. And that's only down $3.30 to 369 Until the IBB breaks 355 that's very far from here, 369 It's another 14 points, 15 points down. Until it breaks that 355 level, there's a modicum of support that fund managers can keep buying. Because why? Every time they've bought it, they've been rewarded within hours. I think this time is going to be different. And as, as, as you can see from this, we are short the IBB from quite a lot higher. So now let's go on. I want to go to the gold, uh, gold contract. Look at the gold contract. It's at down 20 at 11.52. There's that arch formation. 
second art formation looks like a lowercase m. It's the monthly chart that really worries me. But if there's going to be a real serious bank crisis because of the Greek situation, we will see money flow into the currency of fear. I call gold the currency of fear. And that's going to be the sign to say, finally, the dollar, which is screaming to the upside in leg E and acting very well, but at 97.17, up 85 cents, not good enough. It needs to really trade in the 98.20 or higher area to say, I'm making a cup formation. And just like that VIX index, the 120-minute chart, tried to get to the, to the high of the other day and it couldn't do it. So we're looking at the, the dollar. If the dollar starts to trade in the 98s, and starts to hold there for two out of three sessions, that's going to suggest strongly that the, the monthly chart is going to go to a leg C above 100.39. This is a very important moment, and it's su subject to any news at any point. But the major theme is that you need a dark cloud cover, and we've got it for the market to keep moving lower. Now, if I'm looking at the dollar, I just wanted to say that the dollar on a long-term basis, so the support for the dollar is the 95s. A close below 95 at any point in the next week and a half would suggest, uh-oh, be careful, because you could be going to a sideways H to a lowercase m pattern. I'm not sure it can do that, but we'll, have, we'll, we'll see. So, um, you know, there's going to be talk of a deal. It's the same as the Iran thing. It gets postponed, postponed, postponed. A lot of talking. We'll see if there's actual action. I'm not sure that there can be. Um, and the Euro, EUR, USD, did I even do this? Yeah, it has the opposite um, a pattern. It's got that H pattern in the weekly chart that suggests at 1.09 right now, down just a tad, if it breaks underneath 1.08, the low of the 29th of May, it suggests you're going to retest or get real close to the low that was made in March, was it? March, April. Yeah, in March at 1.046. So that's what I want to look at. I can't remember if it was this hour or the last hour that I did the USD JPY. That's holding very well. It's holding a lot better than the dollar. And I don't know if there's been an instant restart yet to call this leg B instead of a leg F. In fact, I should, for all intents and purposes, I should be... Uh, as faithful to the Chapman wave as I can. And that would suggest I put in right here F slash B. So that could recycle, and I will put in, because it's within three bars, I will put in the yellow instant restart sign in the Chapman wave. So what's really important is that the euro, um, sorry, the dollar Japanese yen currency pair fails completely. If it starts to trade, it's at 122.14. If it trades, it doesn't even have to hold there, but if it trades at 118.20 or lower, this is the month of July, it's going to suggest really strongly that, in fact, we could have a longer uh, uh, timeout. Question in the den, could I look at the pound? I, I, you know, I've updated it so many times. Yep, it's there, good. <laughs> I never know. Um, so the British pound right now, the great British pound, made a PE in the... Uh, Monthly chart, remember I spoke about this as being the lowercase m that can then make a larger uh, arch formation. I'll talk about this when we get back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out, Dow's down 160, SB's down 17. Be right back. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative market safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five year market safe power metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts you get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. No annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. Dow's down 171. SB's down 18. I got an email a little earlier as I was talking about Greece uh, from Cub, who used to be in the Dan. It says, I was there on a cruise last year where I rented a car. As I left the first small village into farming areas, we saw garbage piled at the end of the street, 15 foot high. Only thing I imagine is that no money was there to chuck it away. And that's, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a terrible thing. They've just mismanaged their finances. And, um, you know, they're expecting to be rewarded for it. I just don't know how they're going to be rewarded for it. And it's such a shame. I mean, people go there, they just love the place. It's just, it's beautiful, beautiful islands. I know my brother's been a number of times, loves it, loves it. So I don't know what the heck they're doing there, but uh, we'll see. So look at the cup formation, the ball formation in the Canadian, USD, Canadian dollar. Um, I was asked about that. I've got it notated here. Made a peak C minus before failed, came back all the way down from the 200 period, this coral colored, the gold colored uh, 200 period moving average pulls back. There's a left side, right side price time match, which says that March of, uh, 2009, the high was 1.306, and we made a peak F top right here, right there. It could be a recycle, and we'll know because if it breaks above 1.2833, it says, great, I could be uh, looking at a leg C, a new G slash C, and that says that you should get to the old high that was made, what did I say? It was made back in 2009, February or something, March of 2009. That was the low in the market, and this should be making 
a high round about um, by, uh, August, September in that area. It could be before. Look at this beautiful chap wave inside wedge target line. That's what it says right there. And there's a resistance that keeps hitting. So we're going to be watching this one closely. Thank you for reminding me about it here in the den. And um, so that was the question there. Okay, now I want to look at some things. Look at Amazon. Amazon breaking down from a peak E and it's got a C1, C2 potential double top in the weekly and a potential peak F in the monthly. But so far it's having a high level consolidation. This is really positive in the sense that it's holding. But at 428, down seven, down eight right now. <clears throat> if there's a close below 412, call 4, 412. I want to be I want to be really strict about this. Call 414 to 412, absolutely critical support on Amazon. A close below would suggest that this entire candle, that big spike candle of, of April of this year, the low of 377 and a high of 452.65, all of a sudden I'll have to draw in a rect, I'll do it now, a rectangle that says, uh-oh, you break that 412 level, I'm going to have to suggest that there's a test all the way down to the 385, but maybe even the low of that bar, 377. So this is very important. Right now, it's holding well <clears throat> in the weekly chart. Daily chart says, oh, this is tough stuff. It looks like it really wants to test the 420s. So, uh, and resistance is at 437 to 430, 430, sorry, 439 to 442 is that area of resistance. Breaks above that, it'll try to retest the whole line, maybe go to a, a PD. Uh, we'll see in the monthly chart. That's an all-time high. You usually don't fail at the C, so this could be peak C1 peak C2, so that allows it to fail, but normally it would try for a D, but this is abnormal conditions. Look at Google. Same thing, breaking down, made a peak E, it's a hat trick top, spoke about this ages ago. I think that uh, Google's all-time high of 614.44, I think that's going to be um, an all-time high for a while. And uh, most importantly, Google it. 515 down, only seven right now. If it breaks, oh, it's already broken support. It looks like it wants to test the wick of this really strong candle of, the, of January, the week of January the 30th. 501 will be the test. So 50, 505 to 501 going to be critical support on Google. And you can just run them over and over and over. Meantime, back at the ranch, what I did want to look at is the IYT, which is the transportation index, failing again today. It's under all sorts of support. It's going for the Chapman Wave Roman candle of October of last year, the low of 137. The IYT, the iShares um, Transportation Average ETF, is trading at 144, down 61, only down 42.42%, 42 which is way better than the market itself for a change. But it's already, the damage is done. The IYT says this is the candle that wants to trade. It's already into halfway. Right now, it says on a weekly basis, this is the monthly chart I'm looking at, on a weekly basis, if there's a close under 143 on Friday, then you can expect that the low will be tested at 137. Okay, oh, another break. Wow, that was kick quick. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got Mark and Ford Collins. Mark, you wanted to look at just as we're about to go to break. I'll look at that. Mark, what, what are we looking at? To, yeah, I wanted to do a quick look at the GDX and the XLE. They both look very similar. Wondered if you think one of Platinum, them. grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we're back and great. We've got Mark and Ford Collins. And we want, he wants to look at the XLE and he said the XLE looks very much like the GDX. So we're going to go to Mark right now and say, Mark, something to discuss, huh? Yeah, so I'm looking at both charts, GDX and XLE. They both look very similar. They're both coming down, testing left side lows from back at late last year, early this year. They're both doing it on, on a lot less volume. I was wondering if you think either one of them is ripe for a bounce or if you just wait to make sure they don't break those left side lows. So let's do point. this. The TRCCI is an equally weighted um, it's called Reuters Equal Weight Commodity Index. And it uh, has all the different commodities in them. And it is, here's the chart. And you can see that in the last one, two, three, four. In fact, it is very difficult to find a chart that looks like this ever. You will find it occasionally in, in a chart like a commodities chart. But it is rare to go five months in such a tiny range without with the technicals trying to rally and yet the price fails even to go above the nine period exponential moving average. Even back in 2010, the TRCCI uh, went from uh, in January a high of 504 and then pulled back with a low of 480, but a high, uh, no, a low of 453 and a high of 480. And then it stayed in this tiny little range for one, two, three, four, five, but it was hugging the nine period exponential moving average as support sitting right on it and then it broke out now we've got 
under the 9 EMA, not even touching the 9 EMA for strength. And it's been one, two, three, four months, five months, six, seven. Basically, it's been six months, almost seven months that it's been in this tiny little range without any strength. So my, my reasoning here, if you look at the crude oil price, um, it's got that H pattern in the monthly chart. And what I had done, I took it away because it was getting beginning to look a little messy. Let me see if I can just squeeze this a little bit. What I had done was I took a trend line and said from the July high of 2008 to the February low of 2009, I'm going to take that as a, a straight line move. I'm going to make a new parallel. I'm going to grab that parallel and go either to the high that was made, and that would be back in 2011. But really, you want to take the last high of, of significance, and that's this one right here. And that's right um, at, uh, in June of 2014. Let me just get rid of that. 2014. And that suggests that if there was a one-to-one -one relationship, crude oil could go down and go down to the teens. Now, I... My thinking is that crude oil has seen its high. My thinking is that all those um, Middle Eastern countries, all the countries that have been oil producers, that have controlled oil, have had a monopoly. That's all you can call it, is a plain old monopoly on oil. They have overspent like nothing. If I was speaking to the same, same uh, person on the weekend that I was talking to, who was the one that spoke about his friend in Greece, uh, was doing very nicely. They were eating out only two or three times a week instead of three or five times a week. And the other friend in Greece, uh, a friend whose friend was in Greece, was having a terrible time. Um, my suspicion is that um, the amount of spending that's gone on in Dubai and other countries that are really very dependent on the price of oil is so... You, you, aren't, you can't even assess it at this particular point. There's no way, there are no books, in other words, to be able to assess it coherently. And that we have seen a major top, that July top in 2008, and then the most recent whole topping area of the last uh, four or five years, three, uh, two, four years, um, in the 110-ish area, 108 area. I think that that's a major top. And this is the first time that we actually have the opportunity to see crude oil uh, spiral to the downside doesn't have to do it all at once but what I am suggesting is that that's the case now let's get to the nitty-gritties the XLE is the energy ETF <clears throat> it's the S&P select energy spider fund making the pattern I'll call the lowercase h pattern in the monthly chart a close below it's at 72 76 down 79 a close below 70 70 64 was the low a close below 70 no, two out of three monthly closes below 70. And I would not be surprised at all to see um, 67.70s as the next level of support. On the upside, 78 is the uh, uh, nine period exponential moving average resistance. Now, you're looking at this as a potential bounce, correct? Yeah, I was looking at uh, maybe playing like in August call on either the GDX or the XLE or both, maybe a little bit of each, and just uh, see if we can get a little bounce just because they are testing those left side lows, like I said, on really light volume. So this is my thinking. You see the candle that was made yesterday, a doji candle? A close today below 73.24, which suggests we've got one more day of possibly a lower low, and that's the low that should re return to the candle close of 73.55 so that's 70 cents from where we are right now granted that we should test the low of today and then there should be a bounce then a close above yesterday's high of 74.26 says look to the left side for a previous peak or a gap or a nine period exponential moving average as resistance and that's 74.60 now that's micro uh, micromanaging it I'm going to suggest to you two things. One is, if you want to do it, don't get carried away. Treat it more as a kind of an experiment in, in testing your skill, um, both, both getting in and out of the position. That's number one. 
I don't think you can marry the position because from everything I'm looking at, I'd be looking at the put side. I'd rather say, you know what, I'd rather have patience and if it can get to 75, between 75.30 to 76.20 and then starts to make that arch formation, I'd rather be looking at puts for a test of the left side low of earlier this year, which is just under 72. That's kind of the way I'd look at it. But if you want to play on a short-term basis, if you did it now, I'd be real quick to take profits if you see profits at all. And that says by tomorrow, you should have either tested the low of today, which you should be breaking the high of today, which is so far um, 73.47. And if you do that, the next, if there's a pattern here that you can actually perceive as being uh, something to trade, then you want to see really quickly a close above yesterday's, no, a spike, doesn't have to be a close, a, a push above 74.26. But at the same time, you've got to keep your eye on the dollar. The dollar's in leg E, it's in leg D, possibly a PD in the 120 minute chart. It says, as of this exact moment, because I've made such a big deal about the 17,500s on the Dow, that 17,500 level support, this is the moment that you should be looking at some kind of a bounce. And if there isn't a bounce, be careful. So I'd only do it if I was doing it lightly. And if it succeeds by the end of the day or tomorrow, it looks like it's working. Maybe you can add a little bit more to the position. I would say you've got three days and then you've got to get out maximum. Okay. That's just you my feel, thinking. You feel the same way about GDX? Now, the GDX is, is only different in the sense that yesterday, you see the two candles from yesterday and the day before, matches okay. like... Uh, um, um, gold call. Let me just see. The other one I was looking at was Royal Gold. wasn't quite as good. Yeah, it's not quite as good. But Gold Core was acting quite nicely. I want to see what ASA is. It's one of my favorite stocks to look at in the gold area. Yeah, this is just not good. You know, it's going to be a news event. Just like right now, we're getting the next uh, the next uh, rally attempt. I drawn it in in the charts. Where can where have I got it? The next rally attempt in the ten minute chart. That's exactly happening as we're talking. Um, this could be it. Right at the, as we're talking, this is your opportunity because I think the selling is sort of drying up right now. <laughs> you never know by the end of the day. But absolutely, if ever there was an opportunity to trade a news-related balance because there's something coming out tomorrow morning, by the time our market opens, you should already know something. This is the moment. But I would do it really lightly, and I'd treat it more as a kind of just a little bit of fun you're having, testing your skills. This is the GDX. Uh, oh, oh, that was a mistake. Sorry, I need to go here. Ooh, just as well, I was looking to see what it is. There. Okay, so I've drawn another art formation in the 10-minute the uh, e-mini chart, and there it's bouncing. Yeah, this is right as we're speaking. This is the moment where you've got a bounce. This is the Chapman Wave trim gauge. It could have a, a reflex action here that says, hey, you could get yourself a seven to nine point from the low today a bounce in the e-minis and we'll see if that's going to happen but um it's i treat it as a bounce that's all i can say and i, I i'm putting the gdx and the xle in the same category <clears throat> and if all of a sudden the dollar takes a little bit of a breather tomorrow gold will have a little bit of a bounce xle will have a little bit of a bounce and you'll get your your, your position so as we're talking this is the moment but i would treat it as a short term trade Thank you. Thank you for calling. Always uh, great to speak with you. Mark and Fort Collins, Colorado, and we are talking about the XLE and the GDX. The GDX, I didn't tell you if you're not used to these terms. This is the Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF. And it's trading at 1706, down 80 cents, trying to come off the bottom. A little candle here says, hey, if ever there was an opportunity for a very near term bounce, this is it. Now the Dow's only, only down 148. Is be down is down 16. But as I was saying, this is I'm treating it as a bounce. It could be going into um, I'd say to subscribers could go into Wednesday, maybe Thursday morning, um, and then we'll see. I think by Friday we start to come back down again. Uh, it, it difficult because we're talking about the timing of news-related events that are totally irrelevant to the issue in Greece in terms of. Are they going to get the country back again uh, to a, a viable entity or are they going to be um, uh, leaning for loans uh, for the next couple of years as they've done for the last 10 or 15 years? Okay, so let's go back to um, 
the market. I wanted to also look at uh, something like an AMVA. Let's look at some of the hot stocks, previous hot stocks. Peak G slash C in the monthly, still a fabulous looking monthly chart right now at 99.15. Uh, this is Umbrella. And uh, it's trading at 99.15 down 276. But there's a candle here. Let's see with the 100. Yeah, the 120 minute chart is testing for the third time the 200 period exponential moving average after making a peak E in the Chapman wave at 128.06. Went all the way down to 94, 93.06 to the 200 period exponential moving average, trying to bounce off it. If there is a bounce, the bounce should just give you another reflex relief rally. To 108 is the round number high that was made at 11.30 on the 26th of June. Uh, can it get there? I don't know if it can get as much as there, but we'll see. You've got cyber. You remember cyber is one of those hot stocks uh, in the category of, uh, oops, in the category of cybersecurity. Uh, same thing, almost touched the 52.10 level of the 200 period exponential moving average. The low today was 53.19, made a peak D in the daily. I should change that now to a down arrow. Remember, peak D's in the Chapman wave. Got to be careful. There it is. Um, bam, right there. Uh, peak D in the weekly. I should put in a down arrow, but I really must wait until Friday because a down arrow doesn't just apply a sell signal, it implies a sell mode. And peak C, so this cybersecurity, the cyber arc software, CYBR, trading at 54.94 down $3, should at some point in the future go to a leg D. So it's got higher highs still to come if it's to fulfill the Chapman wave target of the peak D. So um, as I'm looking at this, I want to check the time. Yep, we've got another commercial to come and then a break. And then we've got the final wrap up. And we're going to go to Paul in the, uh, that's going to be, uh, think of swims, fabulous option. Oh, what a terrific option hour you can get with what tremendous knowledge. Let me tell you, I, I've, I've traded options for decades, but the I do it. I'm still to this day. I just buy them naked. I do not. I do not do the fancy stuff. I just. It takes a little patience. That's all it takes. And I just haven't had the patience to do it. I do too many other things. So. But the amount of information that you glean from these programs um, on the option hour is just tremendous. So please listen to it. Um, so now I wanted to show you something else. I'm going to go to, I've done the bonds. I can't, you see, I'm getting the hours mixed up because with Tom, I did a very comprehensive look at certain things. Okay, this is what I want you to do. The, the, within the context of the housing sector, the HGX has been stellar and i want to get out of this because this shows you levels to watch i'll, I'll just go dollar htx so that's a 232 it's a trading at 230 right now down dollar 232 strong resistance 226 is the next key level of support in the daily and 228 to 229 on the 120 minute chart um so th those are your parameters if the if the philadelphia housing sector index closes under 225 at any point in the next few days that's just a big negative so let me get out of this close workspace i want to go to this chart right here workspace long-term chart those are long-term charts now you remember i spoke about two things i said how the yields will impact the um housing market and how would WOD, the uh, timber and lumber uh, um, sector ETF or ETN, will impact the housing? Look at this. This is your peak E I was talking about in the Chapman Wave weekly chart of the yield right there. I'll you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. And don't forget, you got Kevin Hinks coming up with uh, Think or Swim and the Options Hour straight after this. So let's go to the, um, the this is the this is the 30-year uh, T-bond yield. Peak at 32.55 in the Chapman wave. That's the fifth highest peak. Now you're pulling back. Remember, I drew that line and said, we've been here many times before. What's different this time? Fear. But otherwise, in fact, it's even better than it's been before. We've been as high as 3.9% uh, way back in 2013-14. So this is a pullback. You've got it in the 10-year year. But the teen, this is, look, look what's happened here. Look how sharp the pullback has been in the 10-year uh, note and the 5-year note yield right there. So this is going to be a very interesting period because it's the Japanization of our bond yields. Then I said I talk about the, the pattern that we're looking at. There's the uh, HEX weekly chart. There's the Chapman wave. There's that um, rising wedge formation. It's a classic formation. But then comes the cup formation, that double top I was talking about, which could be a right shoulder failure pattern. I think it is failing right there. So we're going to be watching this because if, if the uh, HEX starts to close at any point in the next three weeks under two, uh, 218, 
It's way up at 231 right now, but it can do that. That's going to be a big negative. Now, look at this. This is the um, iShares of the Global Timber and Forestry ETF. 56.69 peak E in the weekly chart. Plop, it goes and it breaks this big up, up channel trend line support. It's trading at 51.57 right now, down 98.98. This is, this is serious stuff we're looking at. So um, let's just get out of this for a moment. I want to just go back to the charts right here. In fact, let me do this. Uh, I want to look at Home Depot as we're about to get into the last couple of minutes. There is Home Depot holding quite nicely, but it's got that H pattern. If Home Depot at 111.56 breaks support and at any point in July takes that 106, we'll watch out below. So in the meantime, it's holding one. You've still got some stocks in some areas that are holding. Now, let's do this real quickly. Um, the VIX index, let's go back to the VIX. The VIX index pulling back here a little bit at 1829. If the VIX by the end of the day, because the market now is down 136 in the Dow, down 14, suddenly you get a minus 45 or minus 35 towards the close in the Dow. That says that you could have a pop up tomorrow. That's the reason that's why I was just talking to Mark about the exact perfect time as we were speaking in the uh, certainly the 10 minute chart of the E mini. Look, there it is. Look at that big spike in the E mini. It's exactly what we're talking about. That's what these shows you at TFN are all about timing. So we, at the VIX at 1819, if it closes under 16.70, well, 1644 is the nine period exponential moving average between now and tomorrow, then all of a sudden you've got yourself a chance for a one and a half to two day rally, maybe a little bit more in the market itself. So uh, the extra selling today to go retest the lows, that was really important. Job's done. Now they can start to uh, get the long side, a little bit of action there. Let's go to the Dow INDU as we're wrapping up here. The Dow made a low today, a new low, <clears throat> broke the up channel support, but it's the weekly close that counts. And what's really important, sitting right on the monthly nine period moving average, which for the first time since March, oh, since February, has broken under this black line, the nine period exponential moving average. Wow, is it important? The technicals are very poor. So this is just a counter trend bounce if it is a bounce, which it is. And we'll see what happens uh, by uh, Wednesday. But 17,741 to 17,790s is the very important resistance in the Dow. If it breaks above that, it could even then go to 17,840s as, as, as some reflex action bounce. And then 17,865 is a nine period exponential moving average resistance. So that's what I want to look at on the downside. It's real simple. You break today's low for any reason. It's just another nail in the, well, it's not a good sign. <laughs> okay, now let's just quickly do the same thing with the SPX.X. This is the S&P 500 index. Look at that monthly, starting to test the nine period moving average. Weekly chart is not looking good at all. It has 2,089 nine period moving average resistance and a break of today's low would be very negative. Folks, thanks for being here. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station. And stay tuned for Kevin Hinks coming up. Think or swim. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.